Simple yet amazing. I have to say, Swift Alternator is one of my favorite all-time cars, and you guys probably don't agree with me, but I just love the simplicity of this character. Love the happy expression, love the color, and also love the fact that he's a unique model. Just a great overall representation in my opinion. Now, without any further ado, let's go on with the introduction of today's suggestion video. This was suggested to me by Sen1987. As always, thank you very much for the suggestion. I really do appreciate it. Now, in the description below, you'll see a link to a video explaining how to make a proper suggestion. Please watch that video before you make a suggestion or a birthday request. It's highly appreciated and recommended. Now, let's go on with the review here of Swift Alternator, or as the Car Finder game and Meet the Cars book call him, Swift Alternator. Now, who made the mistake on that name? I'm assuming it's not Mattel, because I do believe his official name is Swift Alternator, and the book and the game made the mistake. But, let me read you guys his bio in the Meet the Cars book. Swift Alternator had dreams of being a heavyweight champion. He could pull a rig four times his own size, but he never followed that dream because being a heavyweight rig pulling champion involves a lot of traveling. And Swift, well, he doesn't like to fly. So it looks like he's a pretty strong guy for just being a little minivan. So that's pretty cool to learn more about the characters as always. And ironically, his bio in the Meet the Cars book is right below Benny Caliper, who's the cancelled final lap single that I reviewed on Tuesday. If you'd like to see my review of him, the link will be down below. Now, he was released as a single in 2010 in the final lap collection and never re-released since. It's kind of odd because most of the Final Lap singles were re-released in the past six years with the exception of a few. A few examples of that are Muddy Lightning McQueen, Milo, Johnny, and Jamie. Now unfortunately, I do not have Swift Alternator in the package to show you guys. He goes for about $40 nowadays on eBay which is a little bit more than I'm willing to spend. So. Hopefully, I'll be able to find a better deal for him in the future. Now, even though I don't have one in the package, I did save his card back. So we can take a look at that. He's got some great art. As you can see, there's the final lap collection emblem. And on the back is a checklist that you can update whenever you get a new final lap car. But it didn't really go that far into the line they use the same checklist on basically all of the releases as you can see swift alternator is not even on this list along with milo or derek decals dobbs so it's a little bit unfortunate but i personally was not going to mark up my card backs i might have done it to one or two but after that i decided it's pointless because after I got all those cars, then there's no really point in needing it anymore. Now Swift appeared in the infield of the Los Angeles International Speedway at the end of the race when everyone was cheering. The infield is also where all the RVs were, so he was shown with a lot of RVs, one of which was Albert Hinky. And yes, Swift was a background character in the movie, shown for only about 2-3 seconds, but come on, isn't that what the entire Final Lap collection was about, am I right? Well, for the most part. Now like I said earlier, Swift has a great expression, I love it. He also has green eyes to go along with his green paint job. And unfortunately, he does have a mouth plate. I've talked so much about mouth plates in previous videos, but if you aren't aware, mouth plates are basically these plastic pieces right here. There's the crack that separates the main metal body from the plastic mouth plate. Now, in my opinion, these are very, very unattractive, but thankfully, Mattel doesn't really use them anymore, just on a few releases. 
Now on the side here, you can't really see anything interesting because he really is just a generic SUV like you'd see driving down the street. I love his rims. They're very, very realistic looking. On the back, he does have a license plate which reads T6 ID 635 and above the number it says bottom end. I had to dig out my magnifying glass to read that one though. Now does that license plate sound familiar to you guys? I'll give you a moment to think about it. Well, it definitely should sound familiar because if you watch my Benny Caliper review on Tuesday, he has the exact same license plate. Same color, same number, same everything. Are you serious, Mattel? Come on. Even the canceled cars have the same license plate numbers as regular releases. Even when I was doing my Benny Caliper review, I found out that Chuki has the same license plate as Benny as well. And that's a little bit more understandable because they're the same model, but look, look how different these are. I'll give you guys an excuse though, Mattel. Here's an excuse. In the Car Finder game and in the Meet the Cars book, they classify these as Remy Runabouts, but Benny is a Remy Runabout Men V, and Swift is a Remy Runabout, just a Remy Runabout. So there is kind of an excuse, but really there should be no excuse at all for why many cars, several of the same model or whatever, have the same license plate. It makes absolutely no sense. If you had the same license plate as another car in the real world, guess what would happen? You'd be in a heap of trouble, as Sheriff would say. But, uh, moving on from that, let's check out Swift Alternator's roof rack right here for any potential luggage he might carry around. But, he doesn't like to fly, so I assume he'd probably go anywhere by highway. So he definitely need that. He's kind of similar to Chuck Choke Cables in the aspect that he has a roof rack, but Swift Alternator is his own unique model. There aren't any other cars that use his casting. As you can see, kind of similar, but different roof rack designs. I also want to compare Swift to Benny Brake Drum right here. Kind of similar, but there are a lot of differences between the two of them as well. And one more car that in my opinion is the most similar to Swift Alternator, and that is Mini. They're very, very similar in size. Mini obviously does not have a luggage rack or roof rack, whatever you'd like to call it, but they are both minivans and they're kind of the same size, I guess you could say. But it's always nice to have those cars out there that are unique to themselves. There are very, very few nowadays though. And just for size comparison, here is Mr. Lightning McQueen. Swift is a pretty tall car, but he is small in the other aspects like width and length. Although he is pretty long, I guess you could say, but McQueen definitely looks quite a bit bigger than him. I mean, not taller, but you guys know what I mean. He's just one of the smaller cars. And that's really all for my review of Mr. Alternator right here. Like I said earlier, I mean, I just love this guy. One of my favorites from the Final Lap collection year and overall based on the past 10 years. So it'd be nice to see a re-release of him, but I always believe that some cars deserve to stay rare now. Swift Alternator is definitely not one of the rarest cars that they've re-released. I mean, Bessie went for like $200, $300, and now I find her sitting on the peg. So, I don't know. I just, I don't really want to go into this because I know a lot of you guys love the re-releases of rarer cars because then you can pick them up. I completely understand that, but for us older time collectors, it degrades the value of the ones we have and it's great for newer collectors though by all means so I don't know I'm kind of 50-50 on this guy getting a re-release because it's not like it's a huge deal he's not that rare nowadays but he'll definitely go up in value so if you want this guy get him now give me collectibles has a great deal on him actually $27 plus shipping so like I said I keep keep 
rambling on at the end of these videos. I don't know why I do this all the time, but thank you all for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Hopefully this video lived up to what you'd hoped it'd be, said 1987. And I'll see you guys tomorrow for another video. I'm doing a video on Friday because there's a birthday request on Saturday. I have to say, whenever you guys have a birthday request, there's always an extra video unless it's on Thursday or Sunday. So yay, extra video means more work for me, but I always love making videos, so I don't mind at all. So I'll see you guys then. Bye now.